This video, video will review again solving trig equations, but this time we'll need to use some of the identities that we've learned in order for us to be able to solve the equation. So typically, if we look at this example here, we have 1 minus sine squared x equals 3 cos x minus 2. Now this is not an identity, so we're not proving that the left side equals the right side here. We're solving the equation. So we're trying to find the value of x that makes the left side equal to the right side. Um, but usually when we solve equations, we can only have one trig expression here. So the problem we have here is we have sine and cosine in the equation. But I'm looking at this expression on the left. And I'm thinking, okay, we have the identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So if we brought this to the other side, we can say that 1 minus sine squared is the same thing as cos squared x. So in this equation, I could replace the 1 minus sine squared with cos squared x, and now I have an equation that has only cosine in it. So I am going, this is a quadratic trig, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. And now I'm going to factor this. So quadratic, two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to minus 3 would be negative 2 and negative 1. So cos x minus 2, cos x minus 1 equals 0. Just going to double check here. Cos times cos, cos squared, minus 1 cos x, minus 2 cos x is minus 3 cos x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is, sorry, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So good, my factoring was done right. Now if I have this times this equals 0, well that means either this one equals 0 or this one equals 0. And isolating for cos x, so add 2 to both sides, I get cos x equals 2. And on this one, I add 1 to both sides, and I get cos x equals 1. So now I have my equation ready to solve. Remember the cosine graph. Kind of looks something like this. Cosine only goes between negative 1 and 1. So anytime you get something like this, cos x equals 2, where this number here, this ratio, is more than 1 or less than minus 1, these are great because they will have no solution. Cos x never gets to 2, it only goes up to 1 and down to minus 1. So those are great. Saves you a lot of, a lot of work. We're done. This one, cos x equals 1. We know that cos x equals 1 when x is 0. And it doesn't happen again until 2 pi. But if we look back at our restrictions on x, we're asked only to find the angles between 0 and 2 pi. So the only place where cos x is going to equal 1 is at 0, because 2 pi is not in our domain. Domain, It's got to be smaller than 2 pi. So this would be our only solution here. So we'll be using some trig identities to, to allow us to, to, to change the expression to something that will allow us to solve for, for the variable. We'll look at some more examples. Let's give this. 0. This one I said let's do it in degrees, so let's find all the angles between 0 and 360, including the 0. Um, okay, so we've got a problem here. These are both sine, sine all right, but this is sine x and this is sine 2x. Well, I believe there's an identity for sine 2x. It looks like this. So sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. So I could replace this with 2 sine x cos x. And even though this has introduced a cosine in here, so we have two different trig expressions, at least our angles are all the same now, x, x, x. Here we had 2x and x. Um, those, those are not possible to work with. But I have a common factor in here, so I can factor out a sine x. And that would leave 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. Just double checking here. 2 sine x cos x, good. Minus sine x, good. So now I have this 
times this equals 0. So I can say, okay, the first term needs to equal 0, or the second term needs to equal 0. And this first one's already isolated for me, that's nice. This one here I need to add 1 to both sides. And then finally to divide by 2 to isolate cosine x. So I've got two equations to solve here. One sine x equals 0 and the other one is cos x equals a half. Let's start with the sine x equals 0. So if we look at our sine graph, it equals 0 there at 180 and again at 360. But we have to find angles that are smaller than 360. So we will get x equals 0 degrees and x equals 180 degrees. That's for this first ratio. For cosine x equals a half, we've got a triangle for that one. So we have the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. The cosine of 60 degrees is 1 over 2, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine x is equal to positive a half. We know cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and it's positive in quadrant 4. We've just found our reference angle of 60 degrees. So measuring here from 0, one answer for x will be 60 degrees. The second answer will be this one, which will be 360 all the way around minus 60 degrees, which is 300 degrees. So our answers are 0 degrees, then 60 degrees, then 180 degrees, and then finally 306, whoops, not 360, sorry, 300 degrees, right? So there we used our tridentities to enable us to solve this equation. All right, in the last one, I think I've gotten us a bit of a doozy here. In this last one here, let's say we got to find all of the um, values of x that would satisfy this equation. So solve over all real numbers. So in other words, give the general solution to this equation. Well, this one's really messed up. We've got sine here, we've got cosine here, and we have the cosine of double the angle here. So I'm going to try to get everything I think in terms of cosine x, because it's hard for me to do something with this. But sine squared x, so I have this identity. So I can say then that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x, if I bring that to the other side. So I can start by doing this. Now that's good because... I've got this as cosine x. This one is a problem still. But we have some identities for that one. We have this one. This one here is not going to be useful to me because when I put this in here, it's going to give me sine x in the equation. I don't want sine x. So remember, we, if we if we replace sine squared x with 1 minus cos squared x and collect our like terms, we had this identity when you simplified it, that cos 2x was 2 cos squared minus 1. So, I'm going to replace cos 2x with 2 cos squared x minus 1. I've got to be careful here because I've got to subtract cos 2x. So I've got to subtract both of these things here. So let's see what we've got. So I've got a minus the 2 cos squared x, and I've got a minus the minus 1, which is like adding 1. Now I've got, it looks like I'm going to end up with a quadratic cosine equation. And so I'm going to move everything to the left side here. So this would become a 2 cos squared on this side, then the minus cos squared x, then I'm going to bring this over there, so that's minus cos x. And then I had the 1 there. And I'm going to bring this over there, so that's minus 1. So when I move everything to the left side, I would get 2 cos squared minus cos squared minus cos x plus 1 
minus 1. Now collecting my like terms, 2 cos squared x minus 1 cos squared x, cos squared x minus cos x equals 0. Okay, so this is actually not so bad now because there's a common factor here of cos x. And so we get cos x equals 0, and here we get cos x minus 1 equals 0, which means cos x equals 1. So I ended up with cos x equals 0 and cos x equals 1. And we're given the general solution. So where does it, well let's start with, I already got a dot here, let's start with cos x equals 1. So it equals 1 at 0, and then it equals 1 again at 2 pi. So I can say x is equal to 0, this one, plus any multiple of 2 pi, because I had to add 2 pi to get to my next answer, where n is an integer. So x is equal to 0 plus any multiple of 2 pi. Technically, I don't even need to write the 0 there. Whoops. I do need to write the n. Any multiple of 2 pi, where n is an integer. So there would be one set of solutions. The other one is where does cos x equals 0? Equals 0 right there at pi over 2. So at pi over 2, and then it's going to gonna hit 0 again here at 3 pi over 2, and 0 again here. So I only have to add pi to get to my next 0 at 3 pi over 2. So if I go pi over 2 and add any multiple of pi, again, where n's an integer, I would have all of my second set of solutions. So these would be all of the solutions to this equation that we started with up at the top here. Sine squared x equals cos x minus cos 2x. And so, again, nothing really new here. Uh, we're still just solving trig equations, but we're using some identities to enable us to solve it.